Hello friend, my name is Casper and today we are going to be talking about Asphyxia. Created by Ebi Hime and released in August of 2015, Asphyxia is an Otome visual novel that tells the story of Samantha. Samantha is a teenager living with severe depression after the falling out with her best friend Lillian, which happened three months prior to the event. Her classmates are going on a field trip out to the countryside and this is where she gets to deal with all of the crap that has been building up for the last three months. I don't know how to put into words just how beautifully written this game is. Asphyxia has an eloquently vivid narrative that perfectly represents each scene and setting that Samantha finds herself in without missing any detail. Whether it be the way that the writer described the idle chatter of Samantha's classmates, the subtle movements and expressions of her friends that the sprites just couldn't depict, or the minute details in their surroundings, the writer did a splendid job at painting each and every scene with every color of the wind. They used <clears throat> they used well-chosen words and just really made me realize how juvenile and immaturish my own writing is. So, I mean, that kind of sucked. I pretty much got like the penis envy of writing, so Ri writer's envy? Is that a thing? Anyways, in the story, we're given a relatively small cast of characters, which each have their own quirks and mannerisms. While Samantha is timid and profusely apologizes for things that she really doesn't need to apologize for, Roberta is strong and confident and has no reservations about scolding Samantha for doing something on the fly instead of thinking things through, even though outside of Samantha, whenever she gets into some sort of argument, she typically loses. Such as her frequent squabbles with Georgia, who is very callous and borderline sadistic. However, as exquisitely artistic as the story's narrative is it didn't belong in the character's speech. This game is set in what I believe to be modern day Britain, just judging by some of the spelling choices and the fact that the game is written in English. They're in the age where students are drinking energy drinks, talking about YouTube, and listening to German metal bands. Even if they are upper class citizens, kids, high schoolers do not talk like this. English teachers, sure, people who have a strong passion for writing, that is believable. But when every one of these teenagers are talking as if they're quoting some Jane Austen novel with the occasional use of coarse language, it really just felt like the writers initially wanted this to be in like maybe the 20s or the 1800s and then decided at the last minute that they were going to set this in modern day Britain. That being said, jumping back to the character personalities a bit, I absolutely hated Samantha. She's a pathetic, useless, immature, needy creature that insists on weighing everyone down with her own problems while refusing to help herself. I understand that this character flaw is what the story itself is centered around, that the field trip is spent with Samantha coming to terms with the fact that she sucks as a person, but I could never feel any sympathy for her whatsoever. Like Lillian, the friend that abandoned her three months prior, I found myself really just exhausted Anytime she started getting into that, you know, wallowing, self-pitying pit, which was very often. I understand that she was written to be like Samuel Taylor Coleridge, but that really doesn't change my opinion of her as a character at all. This was not helped by the fact that some of these scenes dragged on for way too long. There were some conversations that normally wouldn't require a whole lot of time, but just kept going and going and going. That is because this game is primarily about education and in the extras menu, which I will get to later, uh, we learned that the writers, you know, the writers admit that these characters aren't entirely original. Instead, they're all written with the backstories of famous authors in mind. While edutainment is not something I have a problem with as an avid game theory lover, I was a little disappointed to see just how much these characters were based off of the authors from the romantic period. This also explains why some of the scenes really tended to drag on because the writers, while the rest of the story was great, there were just some of these points where the writers wanted to throw all of this information at you instead of trickling it throughout the story. You know how in some visual novels when you click the auto button you kind of have to sit there for a while because you aren't really sure if the auto button's working? Like you don't know if you need to tinker with the preferences or just be patient? 
this isn't a huge deal, but as a reviewer that typically has to blast through these games as quickly as possible, I cannot tell you how much I appreciated the fact that Ebihime implemented a tiny little feature to where the auto button changed colors. It turned to a dark blue when it was on, and it was the same color as everything else in the interface when it was off. Like I said, not a big deal, but I felt it was worth pointing out. Outside of that, Asphyxia follows the general gameplay style for visual novels. Right click will take you into the in-game menu where you can save in one of the multiple save slots provided. Preferences are pretty standard with sound and text speed controls and so on. What I found interesting though is as I mentioned earlier, in the extras menu, there's a note from the author that explains how each of the characters were named after authors from the Romantic period. You can go through the list of names to read about each author that a character was named after, such as Percy Shelley, Robert Southey, and William Wordsworth. After that, there is a CG gallery that you can check out so you can look at the CGs you already unlocked through the gameplay. As you can see, I've played through about half of the game, which took me roughly 8 hours. I actually do have a question to anyone who might know. Does anyone know if the art style used for sprites was traditional art that was scanned onto a PC? At first, I thought that Silly Selly, the artist, simply chose to use a watercolor style, which is gorgeous, but the more I look at the textures and the hair and some of the finer lines, it looks like this was done with traditional art tools. You can also sort of see the lines where maybe the paper wasn't entirely cropped out, which just kind of furthers that suspicion. This isn't a bad thing, they definitely wouldn't be losing brownie points for using traditional art, I'm just genuinely curious. Either way, the art style in this game is just downright gorgeous. The character sprites are beautiful, and they have a ton of detail that gave them each a unique flair, from the layers in Alexandra's hair, to the gold detailing and the uniform dresses worn by Samantha and Lillian, which was a ton different from how De Quincey wore it, to the way George's sleeves puff out at the shoulders. However, you can tell that the artist definitely struggled with hands. You can see it in the way the hands were typically hidden in the character sprites, and how the fingers tended to look a little off awkward when they weren't hidden. It wasn't horrendously distracting, but once you saw it, you saw it. Outside of that, some of the very fine lines in the character sprites kind of had jagged edges, which really was probably just because they weren't scaled down right from their original size. Outside of character designs, let's talk about the background art. This was also done in what looks like a watercolor style, and it's gorgeous. The countryside depicted in the game is beautiful, you can see the rolling hills and definition in the valleys, even when it looks sort of blurry. The youth hostel, while not intricately detailed, is just as beautifully created. If I were to send anything about the art quality, it would be the lack of variety in the backgrounds. Like I said earlier, a lot of these scenes really dragged on, and that was only made more apparent by the fact that we were looking at the same image for many many long minutes. It did feel a tiny bit tiring and I feel like if they just added more backgrounds for us to look at to give us some sort of stimulation other than just reading what was usually some sort of squabble, I feel like it would have made the game a little more entertaining. Outside of that, the artwork was totally splendid. So all in all, Asphyxia, despite its flaws, was a great game and I definitely highly suggest someone to go pick it up if A, you are into sad stories and B, you like visual novels. This was a very somber and grim story that had multiple endings that were all very different from one another. So that made the game have a lot of replay value and on top of that, of course, the art was beautiful and very unique to the visual novel types. John I meant to say genre, but types came out. It also features a hauntingly beautiful soundtrack that I actually really want to see if I can buy separately because that was a good soundtrack. I do want to thank Jake for gifting this to me on Steam. I know it took me a really long time for me to get around to reviewing it, but I really definitely definitely appreciate it. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Asphyxia. Have you played it? What is your opinion on Lillian? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, you can find all of my social media as well as my Patreon in the description. Happy birthday, and I will see you later. Bye!